G'day guys, we're gonna have a look today at the top four white belt ways to escape the full mount. Don't get caught in the mount again. Let's have a look, whether you're a white belt or black, let's have a look at my top four ways, counting down from number four, to get out of the full mount. Let's check it out. Hey, what's up guys, Professor Tom. I'm here today with student and competitor Jonathan. We're gonna have a look today at how to get out of mount. So, guys, the mount sucks, here's the deal. If it was easy to get out of this position, then why are you learning an art that teaches you to be that guy? If it was easy to be me, we'd teach you to get under mount. Clearly no one's teaching you that. It's a horrible place to be. Don't forget guys, in Jiu Jitsu, you know, we can take our time and escape, but in reality, he can get his knees up high by my armpits, squeeze his knees in, and now put a fist onto my jaw, and even though I have a reach much beyond Jonathan's, I can't hit back my head gets hit into mats or concrete. So, under, understanding how to escape mount is crucial so we don't flounder and waste our time and get knocked out. So, the fourth way I like to teach my students to escape mount, and one of the best ways, is especially when they're flat and low like this. When guys are flat and low like this, it can sometimes be hard to do our traditional escapes because his body is flat. But when his upper torso like this is flat and his spine is relatively parallel to the mat, it gives me a purchase on his hips. So my elbows stay in, my fingers stay out, and I put my palms on his hips. Now what I don't want you guys to do is try to bench press your partner. What I want you to do is use your feet close to your butt, lift your hip, and now do the very last bit with your hands, okay? So although we can use our chest and front delt and tricep to get that push, we want to minimize the distance. And what we want to do is we want to get Jonathan's hips up high enough so now his weight is being borne by his hands. So when I lift him up, this is actually quite light. This is very light here. He gets heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier as he gets lower, okay? So what we're going to do for our first escape is he's low and flat with a wide base. I bring my hands to his hips, feet to my butt, hip up, extend, and here I am ready to counter. So I can bring both knees through, sit him back for my butterfly, straight into a butterfly sweep as I would wish. However, sometimes, especially if your partner's a big guy, I go hip up, I push, and I can only get one knee in here. If I get one knee in here, I like to frame on the armpit, I like to bring my foot around and extend them away and end up in an Ashigarami situation, okay? You can fall to this side and I can go for my straight ankle lock finishes. So that's our first generic way, a bridging methodology to get out of mouth. Now Jonathan comes up and we're gonna have a look at our third most popular way I see in my academy to escape. This is all about creating a side profile and getting his knee down nice and low. Okay, so let's have a look at my upper body setup. One on the hip, two on the knee, and I turn. Notice my left leg, guys, flat on the mat, nice and straight. This allows my right heel to come and scoop right here, and I drag his leg across as my left knee drives through. Now I have a wonderful scissoring, like a shearing motion on his leg here, when my right leg is coming back and my left leg is coming forward. If he tries to get his foot out of there, it's very hard. It's not about a thigh master squeeze, it's more about my legs shearing against one another. Now I have two options. One, post the knee, hop over the knee, turn and establish our under hook, okay? So again, we can look at that variation. I call this a snag and drag. I turn with my frames. I snag the leg, I drag the leg, and now I hop over the knee, keeping my underhook ready to attack from half guard. However, as with our first escape we looked at, we can finish it in different fashion. So once I've got my snag and drag, I can get my right arm under, left arm under, and now I put him into a deep half guard. From this deep half guard with both of my hands safe, I can look at bridging up into Jonathan, and now moving into my double under passing position. So whether I want to do an over under pass or just a basic pass from here, it's going to give me more than just an escape. It's going to give me a sweep and a pass most likely too. So now we have escape number two. 
These will start to be escapes that you may be more familiar with as a white belt or a senior belt in Jiu Jitsu. So our second most popular escape is going to be our hip escape. Our hip escape is set up from the same side profile of framing that we used before. In fact, my left leg is still going to be really low. But rather than dragging his leg across horizontally, we're going to extricate our hips on this straight line, like vertically up. So I frame him. My elbows stop him. As my nose crunches, my feet push my butt back. Don't just try to go back like this. You'll never get it done. You need to hold him with your elbows, crunch your nose and shoot your butt back. Once your knees or even just one of your knees is visible, I can now reopen my guard, ensuring he's kept within the slingshot of my legs. Sit up and now start to attack. Okay, so let's have a look at that again. Jonathan is in full mount. I turn from my side. Maybe I can't snag and drag. So I frame him and I crunch my nose down as my hip goes back. So as my nose goes down, my hip goes back. And now I have him here in butterfly guard, ready to do my techniques. So we have our most common way. And if you haven't guessed it already, it's the bridge and roll or upa escape. I'll share with you some tips for me that made this the hardest escape through to the easiest escape. Let's have a look. So from the mount, the problem with the upa escape, great escape, everybody knows it. So knowing things that your partner doesn't will make all the difference. Securing an arm, wonderful. Can be both offensively grabbed, like this. Okay, I can do two hands independent, two hands together. However, if he's grabbing my head, I can also pin it with my head and secure. This also gives a tremendous ability to bridge. Now my right hand can be used on his hip. Instead of blocking his foot like this, where it can just come out, I like to lay on it. And now my right leg is my driving leg as I look up and over with excellent posture and my right roundhouse kick completes my motion. Okay, let's have a look at that variation again, then a more generic roll and look at our options there. So whether he grabs me, okay, and I pin and now I can go shoulder and hip pushing here, I've got a roll, or he's in a more traditional stance and I grab his arm, block his leg, I'm gonna go up and now my roundhouse kick helps complete my momentum. Don't go kicking your training partners in the head that are rolling next to you. So let's have a look at a little tip here that will help you tremendously. Whenever I go to roll someone over, it's about getting this hip past this patella. So his kneecap and his hip, this is why he's balanced right now. Because his support is out and away from his hip. Okay? So my goal is to get his hip just one degree past his support, and he's gonna fall. So don't worry about rolling your partner over, that's too much. Worry about blocking their foot and getting their hip past their knee. Again, one, two, watch. He's not rolled, he's not rolled, he's not rolled. Oh, as soon as I see this angle here, like this, he's rolled. I can throw my roundhouse to complete my momentum, and when I get on top, I'm automatically posting out basing good posture, okay? So, when you do hip escapes, understand that the defense to the hip, the, sorry, the bridge and roll, apologies, the defense to the bridge and roll is a widening of the base. So when you get people that give you a widening of the base, okay, we stop bridge and roll. So if he widens his base wide and far like this, this will make for easy elbow escapes because he's opening up the space. But now if I'm shooting my hips around all the time, he's gonna to start to squeeze his knees. In which case the mount, bridge and roll or upper escape works a treat. Of course, as our partners get more savvy, they'll start to squeeze their knees and open their knees. But it's all about action reaction, guys. Getting out of mount isn't easy. I'm sorry, I wish it was. But if it was, Jiu Jitsu would suck. And Jiu Jitsu doesn't suck, it's freaking awesome. And because of that, it's gonna be hard to get out of mount. But if you can focus on these four ways, your life is gonna be so much easier. So, try not to be mounted, but if you do get mounted, bust out these four ways. Don't stop until you get out, and you can thank me later in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay out of mount, 
Happy Mount Escapes. I'm Professor Tom. I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to follow. I'm on social media, guys. And you can check out our full-length DVD courses and free instructionals on thegrapplingacademy.com. Check it out, guys. I'll see you next time.